welcome to my channel. I just realized this is going to be my first video back. It's been a long time. I really don't even know how long, but a very long time. A year? Has it been a year? Maybe not. Uh, if you hear my dog, whatever. Sorry. <laughs> I have a dog now. I don't think you know that. I don't know if I've even said it on Bookstagram. There are so many things going on in my brain right now. But this video is to talk about all the books that I read in August. I'm having a lot of things because I still have been over on Instagram. So it's like trying to know what to say, what not to say. This is my new area. <laughs> it's a lot different. Um, I... We've done a lot. We haven't moved. I'm still in the same place, but we actually have done a lot of rearranging in our house. It's not necessary to know, but this used to be my daughter's playroom. We then uh, finished our basement and created a play area for her. So I took all the play stuff out of here, put her downstairs, and then now I have recently grown my business at home and so I needed an office space so now that is what this is is my office slash reading area I have a chair to read in I have my bookshelves in here and <laughs> the dog clearly agrees the dog used to be downstairs now he's upstairs there's a lot that's happened but I'm very happy in the place that I am at in my life and I couldn't be more grateful and so I just really feel like booktube is where I need to be. I've made it, I want to make it a less stressful thing. Therefore, I'm filming on my phone because my camera is not working and I was tired of it. <laughs> and so I'm just like, whatever, I'm filming on my phone. I don't care. And hopefully you don't care either because you're just here for the books. So... I guess this video has turned into a catch-up and a wrap-up. I'm going to go close the door. Anyways, I'm very excited what I accomplished reading this month. I read seven things, read and listened to seven things. I'm still very much into audiobooks. And so my TBR looked like this. Um... And I completed, I think, everything on my TBR except for one thing. I did not get to Where the Crawdads Sing because I started this book. I read like the first five pages and it's not for me, at least not right now. There is so much hype about this book. I actually got this as a birthday gift last year when it first came out. Um, for my sister-in-law who also loves books and so I'm super grateful for it. Um, but right now this is not for me. It might be a good audiobook for me to listen to later on. Of course, because of Reese's book club, the wait list on it is like over six months. So it'll probably be a while, but I'm going to put this down and maybe come back to it at a later time. But I did not finish this one. So that was the only thing I didn't finish from my... TBR. So let's just get right into it. Let's first do um, any audiobooks that I listened to. So I believe the first thing I listened to was How to Walk Away by Catherine Center. Everybody has been raving about this. This was my book of the month pick. I have a new system of how I do my TBR but it's still kind of the same. I won't be able to do... I did... <laughs> When I didn't know I was coming back to booktube, I actually did September's TBR in a live video on Instagram because I thought that's how I was going to do it. So if you've seen it, you probably didn't. Not very many people did. But I showed it there, but I will future that I'll be showing how I do them. But So you won't see that this month for September, but October you'll see it. But anyways, I pick one randomly of my book of the month books. And so this was my pick. I really, really enjoyed this book. I loved the audiobook. Like I said, I'd listened to it. And I actually had this as my last pick. <laughs> Sorry, there's so much information. It probably is unnecessary. 
but I have this as my last pick for my online book club that I also do and that's why I did it on audiobook because I needed to hurry and get through it before the time was up and it was amazing if you don't know what this book is about it's about a girl I already forgot her name Margaret who she is with a guy and she thinks she wants to get married to him he's coming he's training to be a pilot she's afraid of flying he convinces her to get in a private plane before he has his license but he says it's fine he of course is taking her out to propose to her she says yes and they immediately get into a plane crash that is not spoilers it happens in the first 20 pages of the book but basically so then what happens is she thinks she's completely fine at the time of the crash when they come she's trapped inside her legs get smashed in the plane and her fiance gets out gets help she's able to be rescued but they're immediately worried about her she thinks she's fine she tells them she's not even in any pain uh, come to find out though that she's not fine she is paralyzed she's a paraplegic i believe it's basically her story of what happens from there how she grows to find herself uh, find what she wants for her life and there's so many amazing relationships in this book okay so here's a little thing I hear people all the time in YA talking about they love books that are just about friendships and relationships and I as I say I hate that I don't hate it but I hate when a book is just that and there's nothing about plot and there's nothing there and I feel like maybe that's kind of a YA thing which is totally fine. But again, also something else, diverging off into another subject. <laughs> um, I've learned that I'm not in love with YA anymore. I'm moving more back into adult just because I find YA to be too cheesy. It's not all the time, as you'll see coming up, but a lot. I, there's not a lot of YA that I love. Most YA for me is a three star. But anyways, this is a book that is so heavily done in the relationships and done so well and there's so much plot with it. It was just amazing. I can't remember. <laughs> okay, again, I'm just word vomiting all my thoughts that I've had over the last little bit about reading and things. A lot has happened since I have left. Um, so I've also learned I have a really hard time like rating books. In the sense of, as soon as I finish a book, I think I know the rating, and I'll give it, like, when I hit finished on my Goodreads, I immediately give it a rating. And then when I come to my Instagram and I put my rating, it's probably different than what I put on my Goodreads. And then when I come here, or at the end of the month on my Instagram, and I'm re-putting all the things, it's probably different again. <laughs> like, so I don't remember what I've given this book. I think at maybe one point I gave it a five, a four. I would say this book... Now that it's been about a month since I've read it and looking back, I would give this book a four star. I can remember pretty much everything that happened. I remember the feelings I had. I remember, so a thing why I wouldn't give it a perfect score was I felt like this book was at such a good pace and things are happening at the perfect time. The plot was really great, but then at the very end, like the finishing up of it felt rushed and I felt like could have maybe a little bit more and it did get a little bit cheesy. There's obviously a romance that happens in most books but I loved that it was kind of a hate to love slash slow burn realistic romance. I loved it. It was so great. It was oh my gosh I loved the romance in this book. I thought it was amazing. And that's the other thing. I loved the romance because it was not cheesy. That's the other qualm I have with YA is it's just become too like cheesy and unrealistic and I'm just like I'm over this. People do not talk like this. Not even teenagers. But, so I did feel like at the end it became a little cheesy and a little like okay too many perfect things are happening and that really wouldn't happen. But it didn't bug me that much. So it'd probably be a four, four and a half. The next thing I listened to, so, oh, that was the thing. So the narrator for this, I can't even remember what her name was, but she was like amazing. That was the other thing I loved 
the audiobook version of it. She did such a great job. And so then in my library app, I'm sure in other ones, you can search by like narrators. And when I looked her up, there were so many books that I wanted to listen to that she had narrated. So the first one I did was Sourdough. I've heard lots of people talk about it and it's one of those books that's either you're gonna love it or you're gonna hate it because it's very different. Basically, it's about this woman who works for a tech company where they're creating robots to basically take over human tasks. They're not trying to like wipe out humans or anything, but they're just trying to make things easier and so humans don't have to do as much. So they kind of have this system, that's how it goes about, they have this system where eating is like an unnecessary task that they want to cut out. And so most people subscribe to like a food program, kind of like these like HelloFresh, Green Chef, all these like home delivery meal service things, but it's not even real food. It's just kind of like concentration pack things. It's like this goo. It's supposed to be to save you time because cooking is a hassle and a waste of time and eating is a waste of time. And so there are very few restaurants, but she gets this flyer on her door or something to this restaurant and then it's like they only have two things on their menu and it's like this super spicy soup and a super spicy sandwich I think and she decides to get it and she just falls in love with it and it comes with this sourdough bread that is like the most amazing thing ever and she orders it every single night. They give her this, They she's never cooked anything in her life so they teach her how to make the sourdough and like give her a sourdough starter and it's this like magical it has this like whimsy element in the book um about this sourdough that it you know is like this magical starter she's never cooked anything and then she like dives into the process and gets so obsessed about it and um i tried to not go into too much detail but this book was so interesting it really just like was so interesting to me she dives in and learning how to make sourdough. I could just seriously just go on and on and tell you everything about the book. It was super great. I loved it a lot. I would say I'd probably give that book another solid four star. I think I might have given it a five on Goodreads. Maybe it would be a five. See, it's like, I don't know. How much am I going to put into ratings anymore? I don't know. It was a really great book and I suggest that if you like um, more whimsy things and the speculative twists of things, you could really enjoy it. Up to you what you want to do, but I highly recommend it. Next up, the same narrator had Ramona Blue. Basically, Ramona Blue is this book about a girl who has a really hard life. Her mom is still around, but kind of left her and her sister when they'd went through a hurricane and she just like up and left because things were too hard. And so they're with her dad and it's basically just a coming of age type of story where a girl is a lesbian and she meets a girl that comes for the summer and she has a boyfriend but she thinks she likes girls but she doesn't know what she wants and Ramona thinks that she needs to know what she wants and how they deal with that and her going back home and also Ramona's older sister is pregnant and the father isn't the best. She's trying to finish her senior year and support her family. Her dad is still there. He works. Uh, he's like a hotel janitor or hotel like repairman type thing. We don't get much of her dad actually in this story and she her and her sister both are like waitresses at a local bar restaurant a boy comes from her past and you learn a lot about again a, a ya book that had really good characters and also really good plot line this was a book to me i guess this is where i mean i can still love a ya book but it has to be realistic. I can see this being a real life story and Ramona's character was not at all, I don't know, it could have went really bad, but Ramona's character was realistic and she was powerful, very self-assured, yet very vulnerable and the relationships were real and I think I gave this book again 
about a four star. I do feel like maybe it was a little bit too long and there were some things that were unnecessary, but overall, I mean, it was amazing. And I've heard from, so Chelsea from Chelsea Dolling Reads, this is a book she's talked about. And so Chelsea, she identifies as bisexual. And so she has vowed and says that, I'm pretty sure she says that this book is good uh, bisexual representation. And me not being a bisexual woman, but I really appreciated the point of view and I thought it was really well done and really great. And especially for young people and a young,